welcome to this week's episode of Two Guys and Some Horror. This is a long anticipated episode for me and for Clark. We've been wanting to get my mom, Kat, on our show for, I think it's like two months now we've been trying to get her on the show. So we're really excited to have her here for Tremors from 1990. Um, we're going to go ahead and let her just talk about why she loves this movie so much. Um, and then I might give some more info about uh, my childhood upbringing watching this movie with family so mom go ahead well i don't want to jump on anything curtis is going to say but i love tremors because i love kevin bacon i love horror films and this is just a great uh just a great movie that's not super scary or anything like that it's got a lot of cool characters in it i think uh, kevin bacon's probably my favorite um i do like earl um uh he's He's a, just a funny guy, and, and I've seen him in a lot of movies. Uh, but it's just funny. There's a lot of good, funny scenes in it. There's a lot of uh, just funny acting, and, and the characters are just, um, they're fantastic. So, and, and I've watched all of the all of the sequels to this movie. Uh, and, and, of course, we I, it's something that I get to share with Curtis, and that's probably the best part of that. Looking at Curtis, I can see Curtis's face right now, and he's his face is just lighting up. He's got a big smile, <laughs> childish grin. Clark, uh, yeah, I, how many times have you seen this movie? Uh, this I've I've seen this movie so many times. I, I don't know since I was a kid. Sweet. Um, but I I wanted to ask. So you've seen all of the Tremors movies, right? So even the most recent one that was like a Netflix special. I haven't seen the Netflix special. I haven't seen that one yet, but I've seen all the movies up to that. Wait, which I think uh, we might need a sequel. Is the is the Netflix special A Cold Day in Hell? Is that the Netflix special? Yeah, that's the one with the. Uh, well, or I guess, I think it was made for Netflix specifically, but yeah. I'm not not certain on that. So don't quote me there. But yeah, it's uh, it, it's based off the TV series where Bert was kind of the uh, the hero. Yeah, I. Uh... I, I watched the movie again this morning uh, while I was doing stuff around the house and and actually have that on my list of things to watch. So. Nice. Be all over it. Yeah, I think all <laughs> Tremors films right now, just so everyone knows, while you're on quarantine, if we're still on quarantine when this episode comes out, all the Tremors movies, I believe, right now are on Netflix. So you can watch them all. Um, I have them on DVD uh, behind me. So... Um, I also watched it just last night again to rehash my memories. Um, but the reason why this movie actually came up um, and why this episode was so exciting is because I actually took my mom out to see this movie um, at the Alamo Draft House here locally in Arizona. Uh, I think it was like two months ago now. And they did a really cool uh, movie party. And when you go, you get to have some like sweet, I don't know, it's uh, like memorabilia. So they give you lighters. Um, I'm showing Clark, and my, I know my mom has hers up right now, and then a keychain. It's the license plate from um, the car, the, uh, uh, what's it, it's a Jimmy, a GM Jimmy or whatever, and the license plate is Uzi for you. So fans of Tremors, um, you get to get some cool sweet swag, and um, we, uh, we actually had party poppers for when there's dynamite in the movie, um, candy cigarettes for every time they pull out a cigarette. Um, you know, and just fun stuff like that. And they also had, and this is probably one of the coolest parts about the Alamo stuff, is the guy who came out first was dressed up like Valentine from the movie. So my mom on video right now is actually wearing her cowboy hat uh, and has her favorite vacuum right behind her. Um, I coincidentally have my favorite vacuum, but that's just coincidence. I didn't uh, stage that. She staged hers. Uh, <laughs> well, my favorite vacuum is behind me too. Perfect. So we all have our favorite own. vacuums. I honestly don't own a vacuum, so it's not <laughs> a lie. It's not also not the truth. <laughs> so uh, I'll give a quick rundown of the Tremors film. Um, and then we'll get into a Clark's quick review, if he's got one. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just start kind of talking about our favorite parts of the movie. Uh, so this is uh, from 1990. And I would say, in my opinion, it is like the epitome of the beginning of the 90s. It's very 90s. Um, acid washed, blue jean, everything, Canadian tuxedos. Uh, I really love the outfits and it definitely dates itself. You know when it came out. 
Um, the director of the film was Ron Underwood, uh, Underwood and he's done Tremors, um, something else notable, City Slickers, and Mighty Joe Young for films. But f I think where he's made most of his money or his career has been is in TV shows. He's done Monk, uh, Grey's Anatomy, Once Upon a Time, which I know my mother and I both uh, enjoy that show as well. I don't know if Clark's ever seen that one before. Um, many, many more, but also Clark, we talked about in Tucker and Dale, a show called Reaper. And he was a writer for that show uh, back in the day as well. And then the writers for this movie, uh, the story and the screenplay was S.S. Wilson and Brent Maddock. And then uh, Ron Underwood, uh, who was our director, helped finish out with the story as well for this. Um, and they've, they've done teamwork things. They've done all the Tremors movies, the TV series, Short Circuit 1 and 2, and a little famous film with Will Smith called Wild Wild West, which I thought was actually kind of cool. Um, and then I obviously see the resemblance. you see the, from, I see the resemblance of tremors to wild, wild west. Yeah, I can see that. Nice. Yeah. And then, uh, we've got some stars in this movie, which we don't normally point out, but I felt it was, uh, important for this one because of two reasons. One, Kevin Bacon, who doesn't love the bacon. Um, he's been in anything and everything. Uh, and I meant to say it that way. Alamo. Sorry to interrupt, but they should have had some bacon at the Alamo. Sorry. They should have had some bacon-esque things. I don't know if any food was bacon specific or any drinks, but yeah. Um, I was actually watching an interview, funny that you bring that up, in Yonkers. Um, they have an Alamo in Yonkers, and he actually went for the Tremors night um, and was in the, the crowd and watched the movie there uh, back in 2015 when they did it there. So we didn't get uh, bacon at ours, but... Uh, we we could have we just missed out um, that's okay man no it's, it's sometimes you just you just can't have bacon yeah high and fat um and then reba mcintyre is in this movie which is pretty yeah, cool you yeah. know and that didn't dawn on me i didn't realize that was reba mcintyre until like we talked about this before you even watched the movies and you were like, yeah, and Reba was his wife. And I was like, wait, Reba's Bert's wife. That's yeah. Reba. And you're, <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. It was her first movie. That's, I mean, that's awesome. Um, so the budget for this was 11 million in 1990. Um, I just want to throw that out there because we always talk about budgets. Um, and I, I don't know if that's big or small. It feels like maybe just the right amount of money. That's, I don't know. That's still pretty big, especially for 1990. That's quite a bit. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much it for like the breakdown of everything. Um, I do have a little blurb I wrote up about the story that we can go over. Um, or we can get into Clark's quick review if, uh, if you got one. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't think there's there's anything really to say about this movie. This is a classic. This. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if we can really. This doesn't horrify it more. It's more of an energizing kind of like action, comedy flick that just happens to have monsters in it. Yes, I would agree. They had to cut a lot of the, the darker sides of the movie, um, especially to meet Keep ratings. PG thirteen. Yeah. Just to just to meet that PG thirteen rating, um, I got some fun facts or a fun fact about that as well when we get to that section um, that I think is funny because it's the best. It's probably my favorite line in the movie. Um, but yeah, so then we'll just jump right into um, synopsis, discussion, and review. Uh, so for those of you at home listening that don't know what this is about, um, the story is basically two small town handymen have had enough of their share. Of bad luck um, and they run into a whole lot more with their gun eccentric friends and a seismologist they'll have to outsmart warm like monsters who are hungry for anything that makes sound um, and that that's the movie in a nutshell it's this is this is a uh, to me this is like childhood in a nutshell I, I mean I remember weekends so many weekends where USA would just have this movie on um, and I know any time it was on, my mom found it on, on cable. I don't know how she did it. This was before like Cox guides, like, you know, cable guides or whatever were out, but somehow she always knew when it was on. And so Saturday mornings we'd be cleaning the house most likely or whatever. And trimmers would be on in the background and we'd all be, um, my brother and I would probably not be cleaning and we would just be watching the movie while my mom and, uh, whoever else was over was helping clean. 
<laughs> I know mom probably remembers a lot of those memories. Well, it's either Tremors or Rosalind, so take your pick there. Take your pick. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's do some uh, some fun stuff. Let's let's talk about our favorite characters first, and we'll start with um, my madre. Okay, well, like I said before, uh, Zal is definitely my favorite character because it's Kevin Bacon, and he's just a great actor. He's I've seen many of his movies, um, but he he's got that that twang and. Um, just the way he walks, he's got that little get up in his step, and I think it shows the most whenever at, at the end of the movie, whenever Ron is getting ready to walk away, and and Earl's giving him a hard time because he won't go up and kiss her, and he's like, "All right, I'm working up to it. I'm working up to it." And then he's walking, you know, and he's like, "What does this girl want with a guy like me?" You know, and, and then he goes and kisses her. But he just he's just a great character. He's um, I think he's kind of the glue of the whole movie, and uh, and he just makes it fun. He make you know you have to have that one character in there that just draws you in, and I think that's the character for me would be Val, for sure. Nice, Clark. Who who would you say is your favorite character? Bert. 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 Well, actually, it's not because he's uh, he's a terrible actor. Uh, the, this guy's in all of the Tremors things. He's very slapsticky. Uh, I can't really take him seriously though. Like whenever he says anything, he's he's just kind of like that campy, nineteen fifties slapstick uh, everyman. You know who he is? Uh, not at the top of my head. Okay, so Michael Gross is the is the dad from Family Ties. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's actually really interesting because. <laughs> When you look at his character on that show, compared to his character in this film series, it's it's like two different oh. people, man. It's it crazy. Makes, I I like it, man. That's, yeah. It's kind of like so you're saying he's essentially Bob Saget turned into this character. Yep. All right. He's kind of like Michael Keaton on on steroids. Michael Keaton on steroids. Okay. Michael Keaton on steroids. I don't know if my mom has the hots for Michael Keaton or Kevin Bacon more. Oh, I love Michael Keaton. Um, um, so do I, though. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not surprised. Um, yeah, no, I... So, if I had to go with a favorite character, I'd have to say Bacon. Valentine is definitely, like, I think my favorite character in the movie. Um, He's only yeah. in the first one. Yeah, which just kind of goes to credit to show Kevin Bacon's fame, right? It just... From here, it just went insane. You couldn't get the guy to do anything if you didn't have the right story, budget, all that stuff. It had to just... He's very picky. The last uh, thing he was in was, I think, that I really remember is X Men First Class. Is uh, yep. Yeah. No, I I don't. I don't know. Like the the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah, that's those are a thing. They they are they they are real. There's no actor you cannot connect Kevin Bacon to, within six degrees. I like the um, the six degrees of Michael Keaton is now a popular thing trending as well. Um, Bacon's oh, really? been, yeah, they've been doing the Bacon one for a long time, but I've noticed a lot of people doing uh, the Keaton one too, just because of all the work that he's been getting. Dude, his his acting skills have improved drastically. He went from kind of being the the blue collar acting guy to playing a really, really as well as Birdman. Yeah, Birdman was nice. Um, I, yeah, I don't know much to say other than I really liked that. I don't want to dive too far into that either. <laughs> well, uh, I guess the next question I have listed here is our favorite scenes. So um, we'll let Clark go first this time, um, and then and then we'll move on. I, I think uh, I think I want to go last, but uh, it's like the whole culmination. It's it's not as particular scene. It's just there, there are a lot of uh, throwbacks or callbacks to sp specific scenes from the beginning to the later parts in this movie. Like cohesively, this movie just kind of really sticks together and works well. You'll, you'll, they'll mention Stampede at the very beginning of the movie and it, it they do it in a comedic way to where it'll kind of stick with you as, as the viewer and everything kind of culminates to one final moment where they kind of do a callback to three different things. So you don't, 
you don't really know what Kevin Bacon's thinking when he does what he does, but it's it's great. I loved it. I was like, that is that's very creative. He had so, a plan. <laughs> so <laughs> gotta have a plan. Uh, so when I was younger, um, my dad let me skip school one time, um, literally one right. time in my entire life, and took me fishing when we lived up in uh, uh, Rose Garden. And uh, so we, we, we headed out, uh, we took his old Dooley Bronco and we went fishing. And I remember it was really cold that, that night and I slept, I couldn't sleep out in the sleeping bag by the fire because uh, it was just too darn cold. So I slept in the back of the, um, the Bronco. And I remember the way that my dad woke me up was shaking the Bronco, yelling, Stampede! Uh, and I just remember being so pissed because I was dead asleep and that's how he decided to wake me up. But uh, that's how much we watched Tremors is there were definitely like, you know, family jokes uh, that would come up from, from that. And that's the first note that I actually wrote down, Clark, was Stampede. <laughs> <laughs> so mom, what, what would be your favorite scene in this movie? You know, that, that end where he, he takes off running and he's like, I've got a GD plan. Yeah. And, and running, you know, but throughout that whole movie, and I don't know if a lot of people pick up on it, but they're constantly looking for that lighter all the time. And that just cracks me up throughout the whole movie because everybody's always looking in their pockets and looking for cigarettes. And at the very end, Rhonda, she's like, I've got it. And she pulls it out of her pocket. And every time they're looking for that lighter, she's always putting her hands in her pockets, looking for it like, like she had it. So at the very end, she's the one that had it and got to light the, the fuse on the, the bomb. But that um, th that ending is just probably just the best scene because, like Clark said, they talk about Stampede right at the beginning, and then yeah. that's how it ends. And, um, and Val finally has a plan. She finally has a plan. All throughout the whole movie, Earl's always telling you, you gotta have a plan, you gotta have a plan, and then Val's got a plan at the end. So that's that's probably my, my favorite, favorite uh, scene out of the whole movie. <laughs> it just came to me. <laughs> Stampede. <Yeah. laughs> Well, I, I think my favorite part of the movie or the favorite, my favorite scene is Bert and um, Reba McIntyre's character. Yeah. In the bunker when they fight the mother humper. Uh, His wife who promptly leaves him. Who promptly leaves him after this movie. So sad. Uh, the wrong they, couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't get Reba for the, for the other movies. She was like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think so. No, she went off to do her little sitcom TV show. and, and That was years fun. later. I know, but years. it was a long plan, okay? It was a long plan. She had a, <laughs> it was a long plan. She, she had like, to have a daughter. Get my own. She had to have a grandkid. <laughs> yeah. Clark, are you a Reba fan? I, I, am, I am not a Reba fan. I am mm. not. I, I was trying I, to think I of a didn't song. Really, I'd never heard her music. I never really watched her show. Huh. Um, I knew her sitcom because my sister would watch it sometimes but otherwise no my mom uh was on a heavy country kick for a while there oh. um oh, so i know God. i've heard some reba in my lifetime i, I uh, mean and yeah. having you know being raised by stronger women uh in my family like my grandmother <laughs> raised me uh my mom was the primary person i'd say in the household who did a lot of stuff for us so being raised by by strong women, um, I know for a fact I've seen a lot of uh, more, I guess, sitcoms that are geared towards women, uh, like Reba's show. I know for a fact my grandma watched that show and probably oh. ate it up and loved it. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, oh, but no, that scene, sorry, that's to wrap that back. That's my favorite scene is uh, <laughs> them just unloading round after round, Reba yelling to Bert, clip and then him just tossing her a clip and him slamming another one in and them coming over the radio radio repeat we got that mother humper like oh so good <laughs> and that's not an edit that's not gotta a, keep uh, it pg-13 yeah that's not an well and that's the thing there are so many b words in this movie um that i am surprised hey, that hey yeah. uh so the standard was you are allowed to use the f word 
appropriately once like there are there are certain movies pg there are two movies i'll use the f word but there's like some weird criteria for it but i think it can't be used in a sexual way is one of the rules or something like that i don't know but you could say bitch in pg movies i don't know man yeah they let them do it i bet you anything um this episode can still be tagged as a clean episode uh with that word but if we use more f-bombs we have to go explicit right away okay Uh, i'm pretty i'm pretty sure i I think probably um but yeah i told my mom before this i go we're gonna try and keep this one as clean as we can just for you mom um and then i'm watching the movie and i'm like wait a minute what are you talking (laughs) about try to keep this as clean this is a very clean podcast curtis i have not sworn oh yeah totally my mom gets to hear about it all the time from my dad why does he have to curse so much (laughs) golly jeepers you know what gee whiz sorry We would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for that meddling dad of yours. (laughs) All right. So so uh, my next question that I wrote down um, was favorite quotes. Now, I know not everyone may have a favorite quote, but I'd like to kick us off because this is my favorite quote. And it's the quote that the Alamo opened with as well for the movie, which is you will have long blonde hair, big green eyes, world class breasts. Ass that won't quit and legs that go all the way up. That's how the host at the Alamo opened it up. And I just turned to my mom and her and I just laughing so hard because he nailed it. He looked just like bacon. He sounded pretty good. Uh, And I I can't think of any other way of watching this movie now. At the Alamo was probably like just the best. I would agree with that. Uh, who, Who would like to go next for quotes? If you got one. Now that's my favorite quote too. 10 Tammy, out of 10. Tammy All the way Lynn, up, man. Tammy Lynn Dexter. Tammy <laughs> Lynn Dexter. <laughs> you know what, Curtis? I have to say that that's probably my favorite too. Wow. Only because my grandpa, when I would, in the 80s, when I would walk into my grandma's grandpa's house in my mini skirt. My grandpa would tease me so hard and ask me if my legs went all the way up to my ass. <laughs> oh my goodness. So okay. My, my grandpa. So that is, yeah, that's probably my favorite quote out of the whole movie because it reminds me of my grandpa. Oh, grandpa. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's three for three on a quote. I love it. Um, okay. Well, the last thing that I kind of thought we could talk about was the deaths because, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we're here for. It's a comedy um for sure but there are some really good deaths in this movie um and i wrote them all down uh so we can just kind of walk through them chronologically if you guys are okay with that that's fine cool so the first person that uh ends up dying in this movie is edgar um he ends up dying on the power line um and it's due to dehydration they find out no heart attack or anything like that he dies before we even the movie even starts technically but if we had the original cut of the of the beginning of the movie this is how the movie would have started Um, they actually filmed the whole scene uh with edgar and another character and uh, i think it's uh fred the farmer guy the one with all the sheep and uh basically they're having a conversation and edgar gets scared and edgar ends up taking his rifle trying to shoot the ground does nothing he runs up the power line and then just waits it out that's how he dies then we cut over to Kevin Bacon um, and and get the movie started. So, But I guess audience thought that that was too dark of an open, um, so they ended up changing it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah. Think would have given a little bit more background on Edgar, you know, because he seemed like he would have been a really cool character for the, for the movie. But Maybe, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's an old drunkard. I don't know how much fun he would have been. I'm honestly, I'm honestly fine with the way they they cut the film and put it together. I'm fine with not knowing him. Just the exposition alone was was plenty to know that there's something going on in the town. Yeah. And it's... they build up, and it's such a pace to where, you know, the movie doesn't really reach a point where it gets boring or it feels monotonous. They cut they the up the ante at every moment until the very end where everything kind of fits perfectly together i think it's pretty spooky not knowing why someone was up there on that power line yeah 
Yeah. I like that. Well, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, having us guess until we actually see one of the graboids, which were introduced by one of them trying to rat grab onto the back of their truck. And then they leave and they have like a piece of it. And then we see kind of like the construction workers getting eaten. And then we start seeing that couple who are building their house. Yeah, the poor And dog. it escalates from there. Right. They get, they get sucked into the ground. Oh, and then the wife gets buried alive in the car. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember that scene from when I was a kid. That was That scared me. And they never show, like, what happens to her until, like, they, they just show the car getting buried. And that's yeah. where the movie cuts until we see the car, them just stumbling upon it when it's buried in the ground. I really love the shot that? of the yeah. lights. Sorry, the lights as the car is going down. And you can see the dust from all the dirt settling and the lights fading out slowly as the car just sinks. Oh, that was really great. Like, well done scene. You know, it was an yeah. accident. Um, I'm throwing mm. some, some fun facts already at you guys. Uh, this is not a part of my 10 fun facts and trivia, but um, that scene got botched because they planned it one way and the material that they were using to basically let the car fall in and, and it looked like quicksand um, hardened too quickly. So they had to pivot and quickly change how they were going to uh, uh, you know, kill her, basically. Uh, wow. There was going to be a longer drawn out with the worm coming in, breaking through the windows and pulling her out and stuff like that. But they had to change it all just because the original effect didn't work out the way that they planned it to, which is crazy. And it turned out better anyways. I think so. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, the, the lights, especially when they come on the horses and you see the lights when they uncover them, it, to me, was a kind of a spooky part of the movie. Yeah, I don't think anyone would like being buried alive. Uh, alive. I mean, it's just not a, you know, it's that, what, that drowning, suffocating, you know, those those kinds of things just really tear people up usually. Um, yeah. Cool. So we got Edgar dead. Fred got sucked into the ground. He's the, the sheep guy. Yeah, the construction workers die from the rock slide and the, the graboid doctor and wife die. <clears throat> and then the next person to die is Walter. He gets eaten by the graboid in the store. The store comes up through the floor. And pulls right. him out, which I thought was a really neat scene. Dude, yeah. I love that character. By the way, we'll give you five bucks for it. <laughs> I was, Twenty. Yeah, I was, I was Fifteen. When Chang died, he got to yeah, pick his own last name. <laughs> yeah. He uh, is he the same actor that was in Big Trouble in Little China? Ooh, good question. He he reminds me of the the wise man from that. But uh, uh, I know he's yeah, the dad he from like... Three Ninjas. Or the grandpa. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. so yes. Um, what's the actor's name? Names. Victor Wong. Victor Wong. Victor Wong. Let's, and then let's uh, see what he's been in. Yeah. I'll look it up. Okay. And then our last death that I have here is Ned, who gets sucked through that tire. And I messaged Clark last night. I was like, "That's or this morning. I can't remember when I messaged you, but I was like, that's got to be the worst way to go, man." You go to sit on this tire, you're thinking you're safe, and then you just get sucked through. Oh. <laughs> he um, definitely wasn't thinking whenever he got up on that tire. No, I, he's obviously dude, not the smartest guy in that small town. Dude, yeah, this is like the essential wise China, Chinese man actor, mysterious guy, racial stereotype they used throughout the 80s. He was in The Golden Child. He was the old man from that. Big Trouble in Little China. He was the wise man in that. Uh dude he's just Three not is the grandpa <laughs> he's just not the grandpa from gremlins though they found someone I, else to do that one <laughs> i'm looking at all this stuff and it's like he's listed as like the wise man wow kind of like pat Morita from the karate kid you know yeah. he was in in uh happy days and all that stuff didn't he get to go on kung fu as well the legend continues wasn't he a, a friend or a recurring member of the show there? I can't remember. I don't know. I'm, now, I'm, seen... now I'm diving too far into a spiral. That's, you're, you're going way too far into the 90s here, and I can't join you on this path. <laughs> that was my yeah, that was my childhood. Grandma and Grandpa watching TV late night. Kung Fu, the legend continues with Daniel Kerrigan, right? Parody. All right, man. Parody. <laughs> um, We're going to... Okay. Well, that's, I think that's all I got, unless there's any other scenes you guys want to talk about. Dude, let's let's talk about the the geologist. Let's talk about Kevin Bacon's love interest. 
at, uh, at one sir, point she's a seismologist i'm sorry the <laughs> seismologist that she and kevin bacon fall fall desperately in love with one another i i don't understand how that happens or why it happens i think the I... writers wanted to give guys you know hope give guys hope yeah <laughs> that they could be with kevin bacon uh or yeah or or that they don't need to be with tammy lynn dexter i guess you know they have, they have to have the token love affair in every movie i i get that and i just i'm just really confused as to why it had to be this oddly matched couple and they just kind of push them together near the end and i was just like ah okay i guess that's a thing even if they didn't do it like nothing would have happened well that uh, so once again that's that's due to us as the viewers uh they had to change the ending of the film even so the mm -hmm. original ending was uh earl and val driving off to the other city finally getting out of uh perfection but oh when yeah they, when they <laughs> yeah when they did that ending they pre-screenings nobody liked it they all said well why didn't he end up with her oh and then so they went back they reshot and then that's the ending we got which is the you know the love happy ending the romantic portion of the film ending um yeah so, so that, that's kind of a bummer i kind of like the original ending better yeah driving off that would have fit in perfectly because yeah that was them at the very start they're trying to leave yeah, well, I still I, feel like Val and Earl never finished their story, though, Mom. Yeah. They don't. That's true. But, I mean, if you watch throughout the movie, she is totally opposite of everything he was looking for in a woman. And you watch them actually grow closer to each other as the movie progresses. Uh-oh, your brother's here. But um, <laughs> the relationship, it, it progresses, and that's, I mean, that's how it has to end, because everybody wants it to happen that way. Yeah, I think I, that's why they... I mean, I felt like they slowly grew together versus they got pushed together. Um, you know, when two people go through a traumatic experience, like being chased by a giant underground worm and have to sleep on a rock together... That's, to me, yeah, the, the story, we're pushing those characters together. I agree with that. But they're going to bond, as characters would, two normal people, I would think. I don't know about love. But at least... What? It's a good thing she didn't fart in her sleep. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, she may have, and maybe, maybe Val likes that. I don't know. Um, Never know. <laughs> But yeah, I, the no the love interest the the love interest part of it is weird, um, but yeah, I mean I don't really know any other way of explaining it other than that's that's probably you know, that's probably what people wanted, at, at especially at that time, early '90s. Everyone's about rom romantic comedies and romantic action. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a really good uh, insight, Clark. Uh, I don't know. I just I always question the motivations behind things like that, and it didn't feel as natural to me. But you know, I, I understand why people want to see kind of a happy resolution on their terms, and love's usually kind of the canned response that most people can resonate with in some way, shape, or form. But they kind of like the bromance a you know, bit that's more. That's a great. That's a great poll. So when we release this episode, listeners, I'm going to put up a poll on Twitter um, and maybe on Instagram if we can do polls or surveys on there as well, um, just to see other people's opinions, whether they feel like, do you think Rhonda should have ended up with Valentine or do you think um, them not ending up together but still being friends is fine? Or if you think, you know, we'll have some kind of poll uh, for you guys to vote on. So just look for that. Uh, yeah. After you listen to this episode. Right. I guess I would ask what would be the alternative to that just you know just not knowing what happened between them even though you could see that whole relationship kind of forming so yeah yeah I mean seeing how the series plays out I don't think their relationship has any um, real 
positive or negative, whether they're together or not, you know, just for the series yeah. sake, for the individual film, it also doesn't seem to make a big make or break on whether the ending of the movie was good or bad to me personally. Right. So I could see it going either way. Wouldn't, wouldn't change anything. I like the idea of them actually finishing what they wanted to do, which was get out of perfection. Yeah. That would have been nice. Cool. Or cool. have a, a snap into the future and you kind of show, uh, them, him together with the girl and the, the other guy and they are in Las Vegas and they're outside of perfection. Something along those lines would have been fine too. And then you could have resolved both things with one. Okay. Right. There's, there's, there's only so many times people could use endings like that. So I, it kind of makes sense. Okay. Um, once again, great insight from Clark. I really love it whenever he picks out stuff like that and we can talk about it. It's nice. Cause I never thought about them not being together. I always thought that that was the perfect way, <laughs> but now I'm like, uh, it doesn't make a difference to me. Yeah. They could not end up together. Things that make go. Hmm. Shower thoughts. Um, okay. Well, we don't have any coming soon cause this isn't the beginning of a month episode. So I think the next, uh, best, uh, segment is fun facts and trivia. That was a drum roll. Um, not by me. Uh, okay. So first fun fact and trivia in order to keep the PG 13, 13 rating tremors had to drop all profanity except for one F bomb. And that's when Kevin Bacon gets to yell it after they killed one of the worms. <laughs> um, Michael Gross finished filming Family Ties one day, shaved his beard, started working on Tremors the next day. That's how short of a turnaround time he had from uh, the, the TV show, which is pretty cool. Uh, the original title for this film was actually going to be Land Sharks, but they had to change that due to a famous SNL sketch featuring Chevy Chase. Yeah, I remember that one. Uh, I have actually never seen the SNL skit, so I watched it last night just so I knew what I was talking about, and I actually really liked the skit. Um, fun fact number four, this is Reba McIntyre's first film. Fun fact number five, Burt's 1989 GMC Jimmy was Michael Gross's real-life vehicle. So that truck that the worm comes under and shakes, rattles, and rolls and pops the tires, that was actually Bert's uh, real car, and they never popped the tires. They just added the sound effect to make it seem like they popped the tires. Ah. Um, the movie, this is number six. The movie was not a big hit in theatrical runs, but became a runaway smash hit in home video and rental. It uh, it tripled its original box office gross. So this that, was on TV all the time. TNT yeah. played this movie at least once a week. TNT, uh, USA uh tnn i think for a while even had it i don't know i saw it. <laughs> yeah i saw it this everywhere. was on all the cable channels everybody wanted to just yep. get some of that kevin bacon magic well that in the minute i think blockbusters and hollywood uh, hollywood videos came out with vhs rentals they realized like we should probably find out what people are watching and try and put that on our channel you know what i mean as fast as we can that way people don't go rent it and they pay attention to us and our ratings go up maybe maybe not right well, yeah. Netflix did start out as a delivery service, a mail delivery service before the yeah. streaming came in. And then they had all those analytics and that, yeah, streaming very brilliant. Huge. And Blockbuster was a little bit too late to the party. It's crazy. There are still people out there that use the uh, delivery rentals from Netflix. They're like old school grandfathered in. Yeah, my brother does it. I, I just thought they would have pushed everyone away, but I guess they can't just push them um, as long as they don't want to. Uh, number seven, Bert's wall of guns had to be completely rebuilt many times as the wall of gun scene was filmed in different locations. Right there. Yeah, that would have been annoying. Uh, this is the shortest Tremors movie in the franchise at a total runtime of 95 minutes. So if you're looking for the others to be quicker and end your pain, it's not, it's not going to happen. They're all longer. This is probably the best Tremors movie too. Agreed. Uh, I, they, yeah. they start, they start evolving from here. They start, every movie is a different tremor They they made one in the wild west for some reason too, for the fourth one. So they kind of get crazy. I think yeah, the ass good. blasters are my favorite. Yeah, the third yeah. movie is where the ass blasters come in. <laughs> the ones that can fly with their farts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
Fun fact number Bert, nine. This is the Bert's first film. Every, Go ahead. Everything. Yeah. Bert's and Bert, everything is all. Bert is, uh, I would say, their, their beloved Tremors treasure. He's the main and character. He finds the sun and the, the whole thing, too, which is very interesting. What, hey, what, speaking of him being the main character, he is not the main character in number two. No, the ba- the one of the main characters from number one Correct. is the main character of number two. Earl. But Bert's the the hero of the uh, the series. Yes, Let's just be frank. hands down. He's in all of the yeah. movies, and he grows to stardom. Hell yeah. yes. So uh, this is the first film directed by Ron Underwood, um, which is kind of cool to see. Um, and then our last fun fact and trivia is in the original script, there's an opening scene between Edgar. And old Fred. It sets up why Edgar climbed the tower, but we don't get it. That's what I was hinting at earlier. When I was talking so we don't have the footage anywhere? So I don't, I'm going to have to look that up because the way I read it, the I, I read a couple articles and watched some interviews. And the way it makes it sound is it was left on the cutting room floor. So sometimes that kind of stuff sits on a on a hard drive somewhere. And when they do like a Scream Factory release of a movie on Blu-ray you'll get those extra scenes that we missed out on before. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know. I, now I kind of want to know, cause that's a much, to me, a much cooler way to start the movie is to see what this old Fred and Edgar episode would be, a, or a scene would be about. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. You found it in the first place. Yes. There's a, there's a lot of, um interviews out there if anyone ever gets bored you can go check them all out kevin bacon loves talking just like me (laughs) cool well this is the last segment of our episode um this is where we talk about what have you done or what have you watched or what have you been up to when we have a guest we like to ask them if there's anything they would like to plug at the moment so mom this is basically your moment to talk Okay, well, you know, I like to talk to you, so. <laughs> um, actually, uh, I've been talking to Curtis about this. I, uh, I don't do audiobooks. I'm, I'm kind of old-fashioned and like to flip through books, but um, I found a book. It's called, it's a four-set uh, series called The Days of Noah, and um, it's not about Noah from the Old Testament. It's about a teacher named Noah, and it's basically during the apocalypse, and it's a, it's a story about two main characters, Everett and Noah, um, and it goes through their timeline, and uh, they're eventually going to come together during this apocalypse. They're on the same side, but I've been listening. It's my first audiobook, and I absolutely love it. I think with everything that's going on with this craziness in the world and people hoarding and, and different things like that, it's a really good book. I mean, it's just the timing of it coming out is just perfect. And if anybody has the opportunity to sit down and listen to it, um, again, it's four books. Um, I think it's a total of 24 hours or whatever of reading time, but it's a fantastic book. And, and the, the way that it is so in line with everything going on right now even to the toilet paper hoarding um it's it's a good it's a really good read i i wouldn't mind buying the book but just for my first audio book it was it was a fantastic find so days of noah cool by days, Mark of, God, days of noah and you're listening on audible right yes yeah cool clark what have you been doing oh book. no go ahead <laughs> no i was just gonna say it was my free book well, probably won't listen to anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Clark, you got anything cool that you've been doing lately or anything you want to plug? I have rediscovered alcohol and it's been great. No, um, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, honestly, my diet's over, so I, I have. I finally got to drink something. Um, and then I was like, all right, I'm done with that. And then I went and got some fast food. Gonna and, go straight through it. What was the choice of I, fast food? The, well, it's, it was Whataburger, yes. of course. Yeah, you were there for me when I when I partook of it. Um, I was jealous. Yeah, you were you were a little jealous. It's all right. You support know. your local Whataburger. Support your local Whataburger. Uh, right now, I would recommend probably avoiding any fast food facility to avoid spread of the uh, this virus. If you need That's someone to deliver it for you, just make sure you are taking care of yourself. So this said. Uh, 
this virus, no joke, is something we should be careful about just to normalize the curve so we don't run out of hospital bed space. Well, I agree. Yeah. Um, well, I guess uh, I will plug Animal Crossing New Horizon because I've been playing a crap ton of that. Um, is it and... the new Animal Crossing? Yeah. So I'll talk to you about it later. I'll call you actually and FaceTime you so I can show you what it looks like because I know you'll love it. Um, but we used to play it on the GameCube. We each had our own memory card and you'd have to swap in and out your own memory card and all that. Right. You don't have to deal with any of that garbage anymore. Um, Couldn't you yeah. visit your, your mom's town? Yeah. yeah. And I used to shake trees and leave stuff on her ground and she used to yell at me. And Oh, yeah. The the memories are strong with uh, with some of the stuff that we did. But I still play. I'm playing on my Switch um, every day. And uh, yeah, it's it's just a lot of fun. It's it definitely really helps. Adorable. Really helps during the quarantine time. Um, you, know. Clark, on the other hand, you and I need to play Stardew Valley and start a farm together. I would be willing to to start a farm with you, Curtis. I don't say this to very many men, but I would start a farm with you. Would you uh, say that we are going to sow the land together? I don't oh, know what? if I like where this is going, but we'll. <laughs> There will be weeping, reaping, and growing. I love it. Oh, right. I love it. Uh, now it so, is time for us to plug our socials. Yeah, let's let's do that. Actually, Perfect. so everybody, if you know don't know, Curtis likes to do live tweets now uh, on Twitter. Whenever he watches horror movies, he'll he'll set up these these live or we'll set up live tweets. And you know, like yesterday, you were watch you were watching a Nightmare Before Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, sorry. So yesterday was Friday the 13th. Uh, today was a night around Elm Street. And right now, uh, obviously this is for time travelers. Uh, we, we currently have a poll running and it looks like Halloween is in the lead for Monday. So the idea oh, is that during the week I'm stuck at home working from home. I always have a movie on when I'm working. Um, so I figured why not take a small hour and a half segment uh, and actually listen to the movie at a higher volume than normal and live tweet as it's going. Um, but I let everyone else vote as to what I'm going to watch. Um, so this episode is going to come out way, way, way past this stuff. But yeah, if you guys um, you know, want to partake in it, there's a couple of things you got to know. So one is you want to follow us at the number two guys horror pod on Twitter and Instagram. Um, that'll help you stay up to date with everything that we're doing that could be fun. Um, it's, it's also a great place to give us suggestions on what you want Clark and I to watch because right now we're just picking all good stuff. We haven't even really picked anything bad in a while, so that's good. Oh, no, we tried. We tried with Screamers, and we, we half got it right. Yeah, I hated it. We, 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 it. we watched something we hated. We watched something that drained us. What was, was like it? Forever ago. It was, I remember feeling dead inside after watching something recently. Was it prom night? No, we haven't watched that for the show. That's know. a great suggestion, though. I don't know, man. Well, we'll find something to, to tear our souls. Actually, Jason X. It was Jason X. See, I just, yeah. I think it's the worst of the Jason series. It doesn't make oh, me man, feel that dead was, inside. That, that movie made, it killed, Jason did a good job. He killed <laughs> my joy. He reached through the screen. There was that one him. scene with the the pillow with the the sleeping bag, but other than that, I was I was I was gonna say that scene made up for the rest of the movie. <laughs> that was the only that was the only redeemable quality of that film. But we watched Leprechaun in space too. That was that was like okay. So after seeing that, I needed some eye bleach, and Leprechaun Four was the eye bleach. Like that okay. was worth it. That was okay. a great counter. Uh, would you say that you would watch those together as a double feature? No. No. Ooh. No. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to watch Jason X ever again. <laughs> it's, just, it's like, you can watch this movie you enjoy, but then you got to kind of waste three hours just focusing on this movie you don't ever want to see again. That's great. It's like, yeah, I, I, can, I can live without watching Leprechaun 4 again. We're good. So, so the other things that you want to look out for on our social medias is a couple of hashtags. So um, hashtag mutant fam, hashtag fright club, and hashtag two guys and you. Um, and those are basically, those are three different hashtags. Uh, one is specifically the one that we use when we're live tweeting and the other two are a, a couple other groups that I've 
join in on and done live tweets with. Um, and they're a lot of fun. They're really good horror people um, in the community, and they love they love horror films just as much as we do. So um, it's all good stuff. It's all for fun. Uh, and and yeah, don't uh, don't miss out. Thanks, Curtis. You're welcome. You're buddy. a gentleman and a I scholar. Try. I try. So sweet. Thank well, you mom, so much, Miss Miller. Yes, thank you for hanging out with us, mom. Uh, I had a really good time, you guys. Awesome. Oh, and thanks, Gat. Before we go, I'll have to do a Kevin Bacon quote from the movie. Hey, I think we found the ass end of this thing. <laughs> awesome. I don't think there's any better way to end this episode than with that. So once again, Mom, thank you so much for coming on the show. Clark, thank you as always for doing this with me. And uh, yeah, we will see you guys in the next episode. Have a great one. Bye.